Hi everyone, it is January 26, 2018. If you have not seen Grindall 61's video, Insanity and Chaos at Town Halls in California, then click on the link below and watch it because it really is demonstrating the breakdown in our country and how communication has really just, it, it's destroyed. California is the state that makes obvious that we have so many problems. And it's also the state where Agenda 2030 is being rapidly implemented. It is the state in which it's obvious that we have government officials who are breaking the law and making up for their own selves laws and that means we have dictators we do not have government officials that represent the american people today that has been going on for years and years and years it is so obvious and yet we have an awful lot of americans who don't care it is true that the majority of americans do not care they don't care about much of anything and I understand that so many people get upset when I say that, or they they make excuses, you know, oh, they're under mind control, oh, they have been subjected to so many poisons, they're ingesting so many poisons, they can't think, they can't think. All of us have been subjected to many poisons. We're all subjected to the frequencies. We are all subjected to everything that the Americans that literally don't care, don't want to be bothered, don't want their comfort upset at all by reality. They don't want to lift a finger to do any research to find out for themselves what truly is happening in this country. They would prefer to just live their little lives and not be bothered. Um, you know, I've done a lot of thinking about, okay, is it really just the poisons that we've been subjected to? Is it the frequencies that we are now subjected to? I understand. I've done an awful lot of research myself to find out how they can use these microwave frequencies, the cell towers, the cell phones, the, the TV screens, computer screens, all of it to mind control us. But we didn't have this technology in the 80s and the 90s. And even then, we had an awful lot. And I don't exclude myself because I have done a lot of thinking about who I was during the 80s, during the 90s, my low level of consciousness, my ego-driven consciousness where, yeah, I was a justice freak and I was pursuing uh, the law to fight for people who got screwed by employers. I was an employment discrimination attorney. So, just because I was a justice freak, <laughs> that doesn't absolve me of my own self-centered desires. my being driven by my own ego. You know, I can't say, oh, wow, you were great because you were fighting for the underdog. You wanted justice. I also wanted those degrees on the wall. I wanted approval. I wanted respect. I wanted status. I wanted, you know, a comfortable material life. And when I think back, the knowledge that I have about myself today, the self-awareness, I see how I lived decades as an adult, driven by those unresolved issues that I had from childhood. You know, I was the stupid one. So I had to prove myself.
no, I wasn't stupid. And I wanted everybody to look at me and say, no, you're not stupid. You have a brain that works. You grow up in, a, in an unloving, uncaring family, and then you become an adult that seeks to be loved and to be cared for and to be approved of. And much of that was driving me. Much of what I was doing with my life was motivated by just wanting to be like everybody else. Please accept me. You know, but I could never go along to get along. And that presented for me an awful lot of problems. But it wasn't until I did very intense work on reevaluating my beliefs and uh, how I was indoctrinated, how I was indoctrinated in so many myths that I believed that were so not right, true. Doctor knows best. My career was destroyed because of medications put on the market. And here I am, an attorney. And the bulk of the work of an attorney is to do research. But I never did the research on those medications. And I thought, and I thought, and I thought, how could I have, how could I have not done the research? Why was I believing someone, they telling me what my experience was when when I've always been somebody who questioned authority. And I was always somebody who, who did not like it when people told me what my experience was. How could I have let that happen? Because I was so inculcated in the myth, doctor knows best. So it has taken many, many years to understand my own self, understand my own, what drives me, what, what my motivation is to become someone who is aware, self-aware. And once there, you can proceed to find out you know, more truths about yourself and about what we live. And once there, you can really see you're very aware of other people at a low level of consciousness. You're very aware of what's driving them, their own egos, and you're very aware of who genuinely cares and who lives the pretense of caring. So an awful lot of Americans, you know, say that they care about an awful lot of things, but they don't because they don't demonstrate it by their actions. So yes, you know, when, when you see this, you understand that people need to do their own individual work for us to get anywhere, anywhere. People need to have that genuine care that Mark Passio talks about, that generative care that compels one to act in the, in the presence of injustice, in the presence of evil, instead of just backing down or turning away from it or simply saying, oh, what a shame, and then walking away from it. But this video that Grindall61 has posted is truly, uh, it exemplifies what is happening, the chaos that we are living now. Utter, utter insanity and chaos. And it's only going to break down further because almost no one's on the same page. Even within this, uh, what, 
what do you want to call it? The truther community? I hate that term. Um, the awake community? So many people are on different pages. And what happens? You know, I post a video, yes, there are satellites, and then I get a lot of comments, no, there aren't satellites, and, and you know, uh, they think that if they're satellites, that means, I guess, there's no firmament around the globe, and, and then, oh, I said globe, oh my god, I'm going to get attacked because there is no globe, it's a flat earth. Um, okay, let's say that there is a flat earth. Why does that mean that there's no satellites. Um, but people are just putting in their opinion, you know, belief, their belief. Um, so NASA has lied to us. We all know that. Does that mean everything is a lie? Does it mean everything is a lie? I post videos and people say that what I am reading is probably not true. That they're only posting this information to get people upset. And then I am perpetuating that propaganda to get people upset. And I have to wonder, do they, do they really think that these things are just not happening? That it's just... Uh, the press printing these articles and but nothing is really happening like the border patrol agents in Florida didn't get on that Greyhound bus they think it's just not true or then they parcel out you know they parse the 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 facts in the article and they then select out a fact that may not be true you know the border agents kicking the grandmother off the bus because she didn't have any documentation. You know, even if it's not true, the mere fact that we have these kinds of lies taking place in our country, that represents a real problem that we have. And they would not be, you know, presenting this the, these articles. They wouldn't be manufacturing articles like this if we weren't turning towards tyranny. If they didn't want to put into the psyche of Americans, you've got to show your papers. You need a real ID. We need a national ID. People are really suffering the events that are taking place. The acceleration, the rapidity with, it, with which they are implementing all of the agendas, the depopulation agenda, Agenda 2030, destroying whole towns, people, their lives. This is taking place. And more and more people are suffering. I'm going to read this article. Um, I'm going to read the whole article. Why we're underestimating American collapse. You might say, having read some of my recent essays, you may, I don't know the, how to pronounce that, don't worry, everything will be fine, it's not that bad, I will look at you politely and then say gently, to tell you the truth, I don't think we're taking collapse nearly seriously enough. Now, I get a lot of comments. Don't worry, God is going to make everything right. Don't worry, Jesus is coming back and he's going to make everything right. Okay, if that's your belief, I'm not going to argue with you and I don't, you know, I, I have nothing to say about that. What I do have to say about that is that people are suffering right now. They're suffering right now. So with that belief, do you just sit back and feel okay about things because you believe in Jesus and you believe Jesus is coming back to make things right. But nothing is right right now for all of those who are suffering. Nothing. And they live, live every single day the stress of whatever it is that they are having to deal with. 
So what do we do about that? Do we sit back and just do nothing about it? I've also had so many people who have uh, come at me. I have had three channels. I've had two Kafka Winston World channels and they were brought down three times. My first original Kafka Winston World channel had 3,700 videos on it. That was terminated. Then I started another Kafka Winston World channel and I don't know how I was able to get the exact same name but I did and I started that channel. It was terminated. I was able to get it back. Then it was terminated just a couple of months ago. And on that channel, I had 3,700 videos. So I have posted approximately, well, probably 8,000, 9,000 videos, depending on how many videos I have on Never Lose Truth. I've been at this for six years. I have posted many videos on solutions, but you get people attacking you because you post a video and you don't mention a solution in it, and then they say, all you ever do is present the problems and you never ever talk about the solutions, but the solutions that I present, nobody wants to hear. It is, the solution is within yourself. The solution is within the individual to do the work necessary to raise their consciousness, to get to that point of generative care. And we need individuals in the aggregate to do this work. But I will tell you, I haven't run into anyone except for one person who engages in that kind of work. So we have an awful lot of awake people who are also comfortable and they're sitting back doing nothing. And things are really going to come to a head. You know, I hear uh, or I read comments, people saying, I'm tired of your anger and I'm tired of you berating your subscribers. You know, if you are taking issue with things that I say, perhaps you are someone who just wants to hear information. You don't want solutions because the solutions mean that you might have to do something. You might have to act. Or perhaps you don't want to do anything but just find out the latest and greatest news thing that comes out on a daily basis. You are keeping yourself informed. For what? For what? Is it entertainment? Is it a form of entertainment? Why are you keeping yourself informed if you don't do anything with the information? What's the point? Are you seeing these events as, you know, Jesus is coming back sooner? Are, are, do you feel like it's bringing you closer to that end time when Jesus comes back? Are you keeping yourself informed? You have your to-go bag ready. It's in the closet. You're keeping yourself informed. You now for any kind of event that's going to take place in your own community so that you can hightail it where? You can save your own life. When we take a hard look at U.S. collapse, we see a number of social pathologies on the rise. Not just any kind, not even troubling, worrying, and dangerous ones, but strange and bizarre ones, unique ones, singular and gruesomely weird ones I've never really seen before. And outside of a dystopia written by Dickens or and Orwell, 
nor have you, and neither has history. They suggest that whatever numbers we use to represent decline, shrinking real incomes, inequality, and so on, we are in fact grossly underestimating what pundits call the human toll, but which sensible human beings like you and I should simply think of as the overwhelming despair, rage, and anxiety of living in a collapsing society. We aren't living in a collapsing society. Mainstream media is reporting the economy is doing well. Really? Well, how many people are doing well? What are the jobs that are being created? Corporations. I come across uh, articles like this, lamenting the loss of New York City's character. All the mom and pop stores, all of the individually owned stores are closing down and chain stores are coming in. Corporations are, are moving to the mega regions and they will provide employment for people who don't live in the mega regions. So you come to the mega regions and that's exactly what they want you to do. The economy is doing pretty well in mega regions like uh, the Texas Triangle and the Piedmont um, I don't know what our mega region is, Piedmont something, Piedmont Atlantic, I think, and some of the mega regions in California. And But outside, no, people are falling off the cliff every single day. And they're, me they're major corporations in the mega regions. You drive around here and you see so many stores closing that were individually owned, the entrepreneurs, those, those jobs are still dying. Leaving an awful lot of people with jobs like Amazon, working in their warehouse and being traded, uh, treated as, as a slave. Treated horribly, with no dignity. There is an awful lot of despair and rage and anxiety. And that's increasing. It's not getting better. So when I have said, don't wait for Trump to fix anything, it's up to you. People don't want to hear that. And I will be honest with you. People have said to me, left comments, what the hell are you doing? All you do is post videos. I tried so hard in Great Barrington to get people active. I tried to set up meetings. I was laughed at. I was humiliated. I was alone. Now, my personal uh, experience, I lost everything. And I'm not going to get into the reasons for that. Not in this video. But I, I have nothing left to lose. I have been hanging on every single day for years. I literally lost my life and got myself into a circumstance where I have not been able to create a life for me. Now you can, you can roll your eyes, you can judge me all you want. You can say, oh, well, you're lazy and you're this and you're that. And you have, you know, per first of all, people don't go to law school if they're lazy. But in everything that I have been trying to do, I understand the external forces out there that prevent people from getting back from actually getting the life that they once had back because so much is different now in our country. 
I went homeless, I was living in my car, I was going from subscriber to subscriber to subscriber, never knowing where the hell I was going to be, desperate to get to an area where I could start a life. I don't have any money, I've been having to, you know, uh, count on strangers, rely on strangers, um, and, you know, many of the subscribers, I have been lied to, betrayed, played, I have uh, had to run from some places. But never knowing what the hell is going on with your own life and where you can start another life. And, and you know that, you know, you desperately need help, but it's the kind of help that family gives. And you're, you don't have a family. You have a family that actually wants you dead. And they work. They literally work. to do everything to push you over the edge. Severe, malignant narcissism. So yes, I know evil. And I have, in my life, grown to be able to spot it. And so between being sensitive to the frequencies, having a stroke, not being able to figure things out, not being able to think, desperate to get to an area where people were, where I could hook up with people who were active, even though it's not my home base, even though I don't own anything in these areas. I still so wanted to get a community working where people were united and active and just to be around that energy would have been so uplifting, but I didn't find it. And yeah, when you're just hanging on to life, when you have no resources, when you have nothing, you have no money, you have nothing, you are so unbelievably physically now uh, kind of like you can't work, you're at your wits end, you're frustrated and desperate and all of this, that, that just stays with you every single day. You get worse. You get worse. Because it's not just the physical, but it's the emotional and it's, 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 uh, you know, spiritual and it's, it's needing a life. It's needing connection. It's needing roots. It's, you know, all of that makes a life. When you don't have any of it, you can be guaranteed to go down. Okay, that's what happened to me. And no, I've not been able to get to an area where I could do things engage in, in what's taking place in the area. And and I have no support in my life. No support in real life. And that really You don't have anybody in your real life that you can feel some uplift. What you had in your life was people who lied to you and so now I posted a video on Kafka Winston World and I have been honest ever since I came on this social network, the internet, YouTube, talking about everything that has been going on. But I posted that video saying I'm out of the game. I don't have it in me anymore. All I can do is post videos until the fat lady sings and I'm beginning to hear that song. So, 
what this author is talking about, the social pathologies of collapse, strange, weird, gruesome, new diseases, not just ones we don't usually see in healthy societies, but ones that we have never really seen before in any modern society. America has had 11 school shootings in the last 23 days. That's one every other day, more or less. So the statistics are alarming enough, but it's just a number. Perspective gives us or asks us for comparison. That's more than anywhere else in the world, even Afghanistan or Iraq. So the phenomenon of regular school shootings appears to be a unique feature of American collapse. It doesn't happen in any other country. So it's the social pathology of collapse. Why are American kids killing each other? Why doesn't any society, or why doesn't their society care enough to intervene? Probably because those kids have given up on life, or their elders have given up on them. Or maybe you're right, and it's not that simple. Still, what do the kids who aren't killing each other do? Well, a lot of them are busy killing themselves. So we have this opioid epidemic, and while I'm not even sure if it's, you know, the epidemic that they report. What is this opioid epidemic about? Could they have uh, put something in the opioid that is so addictive that people just cannot get off it? I don't know. But we use the phrase too casually. It's much more troubling. What's really curious is that many countries, like Asia and Africa uh, countries, you can buy all the opioids, opioids one wants from any local pharmacy without prescription. So you would think that there would be an awful lot of people addicted to opioids in those countries, but they're not. They're not. It seems to be an American phenomenon. So what's going on? Mass self-medication with the hardest of hard drugs. It's a social pathology of collapse, unique to American life. Are so many people hurting? Well, there's a, there is an exponential increase in chronic physical pain, and that certainly has to do with the poisons and the frequencies causing it. But is there an existential pain that many people are running away from? The meaninglessness of their life here in America. You know, we live in a country with people who lie all the time. It's not just the elite. It's not just our politicians. It's not just reporters who are reporting the news, reporting the propaganda. We have a real problem with Americans lying. And when you lie, you render life meaningless. So many Americans living a pretense at a low level of consciousness, they driven by their own egos, self-centered, selfish, but talk a good game. And that's a conflict within the individual that causes, well, for most, it causes a, a conflict subconsciously. And they know that they're living this split. They're not integrated souls. They know it somewhere. They may not have the self-awareness because they just don't do any work to increase their self-awareness, but they have the awareness nonetheless. And that causes a psychic pain. So you have people who run to psychiatrists and get it put on these prescriptive uh, psychiatric medications that cause them a dulling of their own senses and cause an awful lot of problems. And it keeps them away from 
doing the work necessary so that they clear up that existential angst so that they can begin to live a life that has meaning and you can only live a life that has meaning by living the principles that you speak. So, do we have an awful lot of Americans living the principles that they speak? No, we don't. We have Americans that live a lie. And then so many of them, if you try to, you know, have conversation, if you're friends with them, if you're in relation, ship with them and and you know you begin to have conversations about the importance of individual growth the importance of looking at oneself the importance of reevaluating one's beliefs and and doing that hard work of self reflection self examination looking in the mirror facing the mirror because they're so afraid to look at themselves, they then will attack so that they don't have to do that work. But they're surrounded by people who do the exact same thing, so they all get support for this crazy game that they call life. They all get support for it. They get support for doing the exact same thing every single day they get support for all of the pathology within themselves and they tell themselves that they're well because why? They still have their house, they still have their car, they're still able to pay their bills. They're well. That's it. That's the definition here in the United States. It doesn't matter that they act in ways that clearly show that they are so not well, very, very immature, kind of thoughtless creatures, robotic doing the exact same thing every single day, but they're comfortable doing it, so that's why they do it. And so many are awake, and they keep doing what supports this sick, evil system. They become a part, they are absolutely a part of the problem. So if they're not going to resolve that conflict, oh my God, this, this world is turning evil. Our country, oh, something has to be done. And yet they march off to their government job. They march off to the schools in which are so destroying children to get their paycheck. So they're absolutely a part of it. And they know that somewhere, but they can't face it because it means, well, if they face it, it threatens their comfort. So they will attack anybody who challenges their beliefs, their way of living. And it is only by confronting all of what is in conflict within ourself can we ever manifest a healthy society. So this society, it has absolutely become insane, violent, beyond belief, angry, hostile, the division, you know, the divide and conquer strategy has been so successful that people are at one another's throats and so few can see, hey, I've got to do some work on myself so I'm not a part of this insanity this chaos, this craziness. So this opioid epidemic, you can get opioids without a prescription in other countries and they don't have the epidemic of addiction that we do. Why would people abuse opioids in mass unlike anywhere else in the world? They must be living genuinely traumatic and desperate lives in which there is little health care, so they have to self-medicate the terror away. 
But what is so desperate about them? The nomadic retirees, they live in their cars. Retirees live in their cars. They go from place to place, season after season, chasing whatever low wage work they can find. Amazon, Walmart. Well, poor people have always chased seasonal work. Really? Well, that's not the point. Absolute powerlessness and complete indignity is in no other country I can see do retirees who should have been able to save up enough to live on now living in their cars in order to find work just so that they can eat before they die not even in desperately poor ones where at least families live together share resources and care for one another this is another pathology of collapse and while it's unique to America, I think it's spreading very quickly to Western countries. How did America's elderly end up cheated of dignity? Even desperately poor countries have informal social support systems, otherwise known as families and communities. But in America, there is a catastrophic collapse of social bonds. Extreme capitalism has blown it apart. I'd say it was predatory capitalism, not capitalism, but predatory capitalism based on greed that blew it apart. And we were all right there responsible for it. You cannot separate yourself out and say you had nothing to do with the manifestation of the nightmare that we are living. We've all been part of it. And when you get the connection between how you were a part of it and you get it, you're aware of it, then you can extract yourself from it. You can stop those behaviors that contributed to the manifestation of the nightmare. If you're going to be you know, attacking me for saying, yes, we are all responsible, then you're telling me that you can't see your part and you need to really reflect on your part. Because if you don't, you will continue to be a part of the manifestation. You can claim that you're not a part of it because you sit and you don't do anything and you don't see anybody and maybe you're not working or whatever. Um, or you have some method of self-employment and you say, I'm not a part of it. But if you're not active in your own community, doing things proactively to reestablish community, reestablish bonds, reestablish trust, and get involved in your own town halls, find out what's happening and fight these agendas, you are part of it. You've made a decision to not engage and that decision puts you on the side of being a part of the nightmare, not a part of the solution. We have many elderly who now live in their cars. What happened to the family? Well, I, I've, I've posted many videos on this and I get people who say, well, that was a deliberate agenda to break down the family. Well, guess what? It would never have happened had those adults actually worked on their own self so that they could have the strength within themselves so that they could understand who they are and they would never have been manipulated in, in, a, in a direction that is rather grotesque and immoral. And, you know, if you're not going to take any responsibility for it and you're just going to continually point at these elite psychopaths, you know, who do have the money and they're, they're in positions of power. Um, and we also know that, yes, social engineering absolutely is a real fact and it has been successful. But you're just going to continually throw away yourself in the equation 
then you might be somebody who can't take responsibility for anything. Extreme capitalism has blown apart American society so totally that people cannot even care for one another as much as they do in places like Pakistan, Nigeria. Social bonds, relationships themselves have become unaffordable luxuries. More so than even in poor countries. Social pathology unique to American collapse. I think that we do the only thing unique is that there we have grown up in a culture that has has been about materialism and kids are raised in a way to believe that only their material success will stamp them as successful. When everything is about materialism, then life does become meaningless. And I do think that there's an awful lot of people who who do have that anxiety because their lives have become meaningless. When we are so off balance, a, a country filled with so many disintegrated Americans off balance, focusing only on the material, on their paycheck, on what goods they can buy. And never, never do they look inward. You do become someone who is about greed and your own comfort. You become very, very self-centered. And yeah, oh, you say that you care so much about your friends and your family, but haven't we lived in a society for so long where anybody is replaceable? Discarding people who make you feel uncomfortable, discarding, you know, friends, just, oh, there's another one around the corner. Big deal. Family not helping family. Not even caring if people die. Sorry, but that is the cold, hard fact of what we have become. Costa Ricans now have a higher uh, life expectancy than Americans. So yes, we are poisoned. I think, I think the United States is far more poisoned than any other country. But why is that? Well, because they did have to kill off Americans to bring in the New World Order because we did have this psyche, even though we didn't really practice it, didn't really live it, we had this psyche that we were free, that we could do anything, that we were individuals. And whether myth or not, we did hold out hope to the rest of the world. And now what are we? Just insane, chaotic. The last path pathology that he speaks of, it is one of the soul, not one of the limbs like the others above. American, Americans appear to be quite happy simply watching one another die in all the ways above. 
They just don't appear to be too disturbed, moved, or even affected by the four pathologies above, kids killing each other, social bonds collapsing, being powerless to live with dignity, or having to numb the pain. You ever think about your soul? I can guarantee you that the majority of Americans don't. Don't. It's just not on their radar. If these pathologies happened in any other rich country, even in most poor ones, people would be aghast, shocked, and stunned, and certainly moved to make them not happen, but in America, they are, well, not even, they don't even register. They are indifferent, mostly. Yeah, we're indifferent. Um, I do believe that English is this man's second language, so it's, I have thrown in my own language. So my last pathology is a predatory, predatory society. A predatory society doesn't just mean oligarchs ripping people off financially. In a truer way, it means people nodding and smiling and going about their everyday business as their neighbors, friends, colleagues die, early deaths in shallow graves. The predator in American society isn't just it's super rich, but an invisible and insatiable force, the normalization of what in the rest of the world would be seen as shameful, historic, generational moral failures, if not crimes, becoming mere mundane, everyday affairs, not to be worried by or troubled about. They're affecting our collective soul. America has always been a pioneer, only today it is host, not just to problems, not just rarely seen in healthy societies. It is pioneering novel social pathologies around the world. So American collapse is much more severe than any of us could really imagine. When you stay in your own safe cocoon, when you take a peek out on the internet and, and collect some information about what's happening in other communities, don't think that you know everything that's going on. There's far more going on in this country than we could possibly know and understand. And that's also another problem. People don't get out of their own communities. Travel around this country and you will be traveling around town after town after town, county after county, decimated. The economy is not doing well. But then you do have an awful lot of people who, oh, well, the economy is doing well, and Trump can only do so much, and he's fighting the deep state, and he's doing this, and he's doing that, and ain't it great? No. No. If you really go and do the research, you will find that Trump is absolutely 100% following and accelerating a lot of the policies that have been taking place for decades. Do the research, find out what's happening in Syria, find out what's happening in Iraq, find out that we are killing so many innocent people still. Just recently saw an article, yes, U.S. is still aiding ISIS. Trump has killed more innocent people in his first year than Obama did in eight years.
So yeah, I don't know what to do anymore. I I am really, well, I, there's nothing for me to do anymore. Um, I can't post on the latest and greatest. I, I just, the insanity of it all is, it got to me. Um, I do know, I absolutely do know that if the individual doesn't change, then nothing is going to change. I know that. I know it is the truth. So people have, you know, left comments. God, you're just so hopeless. Yes, I am hopeless. I am hopeless. Hell, I've met a lot of the people who are awake. They're not doing anything. They have, they're filled with their own personal issues that prevent them from doing anything. They won't take a look at their personal issues. They lie, they betray, and they discard. But they can't see the connection between how they live and the nightmare that has manifested. It is revealed every day the nuances of a declining nation. It's a catastrophe that is happening on a daily basis. And nothing has paralleled it in modern history. Because the mess that America has made of itself is so especially unique, so singular, so perversely special, the treatment will have to be novel. The uniqueness of this social pathology tells us that the American collapse is not like a reversion to any mean or the downswing of a trend. It is something outside the norm, something beyond the data past these statistics. It's like the meteor that hit the dinosaurs. An outlier beyond outliers. An event at the extreme of the extremes. And that is why our narratives, frames, and theories cannot really capture it, much less explain it. We need a whole new language and a new way of seeing to even begin to make sense of it. But that is America's task not the world's. The world's task is to not follow our model. And it's, you know, people have this, yeah, I get down on capitalism. Look, if we actually had free markets and we had the freedom and we had a moral core then we would not have the problem that we have. It is, it is the absence of a collective moral core that led us right here. But our continual diet of junk food, junk media, junk science, junk culture, junk punditry, junk economics, people treating one another and their society like junk. We have fed upon this for far too long and it's got to change. I don't see it changing though. Because what needs to change is the individual. And while many individuals are not consumed with a diet of all those junks, they still haven't done the work necessary to get themselves in a place where they can actually act, act on their own behalf <laughs> to save what they have. I still think an awful lot of people who are awake think that, hey, it's not going to happen to me. That invincibility, that 
well, adults grow out of. But we are very much adult children. Very immature. And I know a lot of subscribers who probably had this idea that it wasn't going to come to them, and it did. And they lost their homes, and they lost their jobs, and they went homeless. And they faced the event, the crisis of, you know, their home being flooded and facing a family that turned their back on them. And that can only come from a people very disturbed. Families turning their backs. Not helping one another. Not providing the care and the support and the love. Friends who are really not friends. Friends who lie, friends who betray, you know. We have a serious problem. And it's not just in Washington, D.C. It's in our own soul. And again, I do, I'm not excluding myself. But I did do the work. I continue to do the work. And I have faced, I have faced an awful lot. I faced the way I was living. And there's a big difference between who I was and who I became. And while I did become somebody who so wanted to become active to fight these agendas, that was back in Great Barrington and facing all of the people that were my friends, I began to see how they didn't care about truth, how they didn't care about anything but their own lives, and they certainly didn't care about me. Everything was just a lie. Everything was about themselves. And then I hit the road and got to meet an awful lot of people just like those liberal progressives, but they're not liberal progressives. And people will do anything no matter how absurd, to not face themselves. And when that happens, they then end up hurting other people, and that creates more of a nightmare. Creates more division, breaks down trust. Yeah, there's an awful lot of work that we have to do individually. It's not about just sitting back, watching YouTube videos, getting the knowledge of what's taking place. It's about a tremendous amount of work. To reverse this tide. 